Praise God for you, and thank you for joining us this morning. I'm Prophetina. Hi, I'm Apostle Jonathan. God bless you. God bless you. You know, we're going to be talking about the seer, okay? Uh, this great anointing and great mantle, great ministry, uh, great uh, gift to the body of Christ that God has placed in the body of Christ. And all week long, we're going, yes, it is, Kenneth. <laughs> we're going to be talking about this power gift that God has assigned uh, and, and he is uh, stretching and he's increasing uh, for this time and for this season. And we're excited about it. We're excited about it. Oh, praise God. Thank you so much. Um, is that Z, Elzada? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're one of our faves too. Amen. And so uh, it is the seer anointing. What is the seer anointing? And that's what we're going to be discussing today. And we certainly hope that you'll be able to get something out of it, some clarity, some understanding, some depth into the anointing and the grace that God has given you. Praise God. Man of God, how would you like to pray for us today? Amen. Well, I'm excited about this. We need to know about this in the body of Christ. So, mm -hmm. Some of you are seers already. <laughs> and so it's awesome that we can have some teaching, some fundamental understanding of how this works. What's the difference between a prophet and a seer mm -hmm. and what are the graces there mm -hmm. and how we can work with you mm -hmm. and bless you and honor you Absolutely. in your gifts uh, you know it's it's such a shame that uh, our first reaction in the body of Christ is one of fear and one of oh no yeah. they might mess up yeah. you know mm -hmm. we want to be able to expand these mm -hmm. gifts and honor those that God has blessed Absolutely. you know we look in the in the Bible and, and David had assigned to him Gad, who was a seer, was a seer. and there was, a, was. Mm -hmm. there was a, a second one that was a seer, and there was a third one that was a prophet. Samuel was called a seer as well. You know, mm -hmm. and, and these were men that not only were um, blessed in the gifts that they had, but here they were uh, advising the very king of the land. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about being raised up in your <laughs> gift. Out of the, these were people that were... Uh, assigned to the king himself. Absolutely, part uh, of the cabinet, part of uh, the uh, <laughs> yeah. you know the king's uh, great advisor. Very worked very close with the king, and at that time they were called seers. And then when Samuel came along and started his school, it was called the school of prophets. And that's when you see the name in the Old Testament change from seer to prophet. 
And so we're going to go into some of that today as well, understanding what the difference is. Okay? Praise God. And no, so, seer of God, you are valuable. You're absolutely. important. <laughs> Hallelujah. We need your gifts. And just like we need all the gifts. But Amen. we, you know, what does it say in 1 Corinthians 14? But desire that you may prophesy. Desire the the best gifts. Absolutely. Amen? Absolutely. And these are some best gifts that we're talking about here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise and so Lord. as we seek to conform to the image of Christ, and you're going to hear me every time you hear me and you see me talking, I'm going to uh, quote this scripture where Jesus says, I say what I hear the Father say, and I do what I see him do. And that is a, a very good description of the seer, okay, anointing and grace, that how can he do uh, what he sees the Lord doing unless God has given him some insight, a vision okay in uh, to seeing you know what it is that he wants him to do and so we are growing in our knowledge and in our admonition of the lord and one of the ways that we're doing that is by uh, accepting the seer mantle okay developing ourselves in the seer mantle okay so as we develop ourselves in the seer mantle today we're going to talk about just describing what the seer mantle is good morning periscope Praise God. And so thank you all for joining us. We have our Facebook family. We have Periscope. We have live stream, live me, and live star. God bless all of you. So I hope that you all can get something out of this teaching uh, today. And so what I want to do first is there is an apostle that's in our area. Okay. But before we even do that, uh, the apostle Jonathan is going to pray for us today. Go ahead. Amen. Let's just start out with prayer. Here's a pastor from India. Isn't that awesome? Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that we have access to your throne. Amen. Access to the King of Kings and thank Lord of Jesus. Lords, our Father. Hallelujah. Our Father in heaven, blessed be your name. Hallowed be your name. We bless you today. We thank you that we can be called your sons and daughters. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that we can come to you with our prayers. We thank you we can come to your word and, and learn from you. We can also come by your Holy Spirit and learn. Oh, we thank you that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. There is nothing too difficult for thee. We pray, come thy kingdom, be done thy will, in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. We thank you, O oh God. Amen. We pray for righteousness, peace, Amen. and joy in our country. Amen. We pray for revival, anointing, yes, blessing. Hallelujah. We thank you for the outpouring of your spirit Amen. and with all these different gifts. Thank we you, thank Jesus. you for the seer anointing yes. in Jesus' name. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, yes. We pray provision mm -hmm. be given to each of your children today, Lord. You said, give us this day our daily bread. We pray that your finances would be whole, that your job and whatever you need oh, will be blessed and taken care of. And we know that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless you, O oh God. We thank you and we have confidently expect uh, these answers to our prayers, Lord. You, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We thank you, God, for all your forgiveness and blessing. And because of that, we extend blessing to others. We Amen. extend forgiveness. Amen. We pray for our enemies, that they would be saved, that if they would repent, they would hear the good news. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we bless them today as well. And Lord, as you're blessing us, as you're blessing uh, each of your children, we also ask that you lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For we know that you have the power and the strength. We know that you are not put us in a situation yes, that we can't handle. We know that Jesus was tempted every way that we yes, are, yes. and it was an overcomer. He said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. In this world you shall have tribulation, but he's uh, overcome. And so we give you the praise and the honor and glory this morning in Jesus' name. Have your way today. Bless the prophet. Bless each one of you in Jesus' name. May you walk in the Spirit as he directs you. Amen. God has been leading us, uh, and you know, before he does anything on the earth, he lets his prophets know. Praise God. And so he's been talking about, over the last few years, about this increase of the seer anointing. Okay, and what that is. So we know that all seers are prophets. But you know what? All prophets are not seers. 
And so we're going to look at this specialty anointing, the special grace in the prophetic realm. Now, there are all kinds of prophets with all kinds of ministries. Okay, we have the ministry of music prophets. We have the administrative prophet. We have the governmental prophet. We have the marketplace business prophet. All kinds of uh, diversities of anointing in the prophetic gift and calling. But today we're going to look at the, the anointing that is called the seer anointing. And we're going to try anyway to describe it. I mean, it's so vast, you know, uh, and, and such a special gift and call that God has in the body of Christ. Uh, it has been in the past, and in these days, God is increasing that anointing. Uh, and the anointing for the seer comes uh, specifically through the gifting of the discerning of spirits. A seer has a very strong anointing in the, uh, in the nine gifts of the spirit, but more specifically in the gift of discerning of spirits. And so what I'd like to do is read you a prophetic word. Uh, that was given through an apostle here in the Phoenix area, Apostle Pam Archibald. And it so encapsulates uh, what God has been saying, what he's been saying through us and many other prophets. But let's hear uh, the word of the Lord as it was given to uh, C, um, Apostle Pam Archibald, who is here in the Phoenix area. And this is what she says. She says, I hear the spirit of the Lord say that we are now in a new season and a portal of a keen seer anointing that will be released with the prophetic and deliverance mantles. This new season of the seer anointing will release greater clarity, greater accuracy, and greater wisdom and revelation of the kingdom of God. This new season of saints with the sight in the invisible realm will be released in the masses outside the physical doors of the church buildings and will see kingdoms of darkness in the marketplace and mount siege attacks in efforts to tear down the strongholds that have been withstood, uh, that have withstood the penetration of the church. Press in and have eyes to see in the spirit. Apostle Pam Alterbald. And that's exactly what we're talking about, what we have been talking about and about what God is doing. But what I want to highlight is some of the, uh, and emphasize some of the um, things that she has said here. Praise God. Uh, a new season, we've been talking about the new season, and a portal of King Seer anointing. We've been talking about the accuracy and uh, that God is going to bring to the Seer anointing and open up new avenues of seeing in the spirit realm, okay? And, but the, here's something new. Prophetic and deliverance mantles are going to be coming through the seer anointing. Isn't that awesome? It is. Okay, new clarity, a greater clarity and a greater accuracy and greater wisdom and revel, revelation in the kingdom of God. Awesome, awesome, awesome. God is opening up the invisible realm an inner sight, a new sight, a new awareness into the invisible spiritual realm like never before. Now, seers not only see the good things in the invisible realm, but they see the demons in the invisible realm too. And, and as we teach this week, we are going to teach on how to discern, you know, the difference, you know, whether it's your spirit, whether it's the spirit of God, whether it's your imagination. And by the time this week is out, you'll have more clarity in that particular area. But it's all about, okay, uh, bringing the kingdom of light to the kingdom of darkness in the marketplace, not just in the church. And this is, this is what's so exciting about this prophetic word. You know, something that we've been talking about uh, all along in bringing the word of God, the power of God into the marketplace. Isn't that awesome? Praise God. Not just in the church, not just from the pulpit now, but in everywhere you be, in everywhere you at. <laughs> <laughs> the power of God through the seer anointing can work in authority and in an anointing and grace. Isn't that awesome? Praise God. Well, I, I really want to hear just a tad bit of your testimony, how you began to see uh, some of the things I know you, you see uh, uh, after your experience of being a missionary. Uh, short-term missions to mm -hmm. Haiti, yeah. mm -hmm. you began to see in the spirit, you began to recognize uh, witches and witchcraft and, yeah. okay. and things like that. And it wasn't something you sought out, mm -hmm. 
you know, I just want to be experiential here for a second because mm -hmm. a lot of us relate to you when you when you say things began to happen mm -hmm. and you're like, whoa, what is this? And I didn't ask for it, but <laughs> I've got to go forward in it, you know. And, you know, just kind of be real for a second and talk about what that was like oh, as man. the Lord it began take, to baby, it reveal would take that. all gift. day, but as we go along in this teaching, I promise you, I will be giving you more of some of the experiences that God has given me in this particular realm. Now, there are two different kinds of seers, okay? There is the seer uh, who, uh, who uh, or two different kinds of prophets, okay? And you have the prophet who is more of, a, uh, who uses uh, speech or talks, okay? And then you have the kinds of prophets that, that do seeing and they see visions and dreams. Well, God has given me a combination of the two. But I would say that I am one third seer and two thirds, you know, the regular everyday kind of speech prophet, prophet, prophet mm -hmm. that, that speaks and talks and, and gives inspiration through uh, voice messages, that kind of thing. Okay. And so we're going to get into that, you know, as we go along. And uh, I just want to let you know that Jonathan is, has seer gifting as well. But what we want to do is we want to increase, since God is sending an anointing to increase these, these gifts, we want more of an increase in the area of the discerning of spirits in this seer mantle, in seeing, okay, in seeing what God is seeing, and God giving us his sight. Okay, so we want an increase. Praise God. And so what we're going to be talking about in developing the seer anointing is uh, seers receive that basically seers receive inspired thoughts okay and they receive inspired visions and dreams they receive inspired and divine imaginations and we're going to go into each one of those car categories and you know and talk about this special anointing and grace that God has sent to you as a seer. In times past, you might have been misunderstood. I know in my beginning of my Christian life, I misunderstood a lot of seers, okay? Because <laughs> they would always call me and tell me these pizza dreams that they had, you know? That's what it sounded like to me. But because it kept happening, I realized that even as a very young young Christian, that wait a minute, these people are bona fide Christians. They love the Lord. All of these green dreams cannot be just you know, pizza dreams. They got to be something to it. And so I began to pray and ask God to give me the discernment, but also too, to give me the interpretation, you know, of the dreams that they were having, because I, they were so passionate about it and they were my friends. So I wanted to enter <laughs> into that passion with them. And I wanted to understand where that passion was coming from, because certainly at that particular time, I wasn't having those kind of dreams and manifestations. Okay. So for the past two months in our teaching, the Lord has been having me lay foundation. And I've been laying some foundation in two months so that you can come to this place where you would be stabilized and taking off, okay, in this seer anointing, in this seer grace. And so I've been talking about the perfect prophet and what that means when Jesus said to be, therefore be you perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. Did a whole teaching and series on that. And then I did a whole series in teaching on cultivating the presence of the Holy Spirit, making sure that you understand that the Holy Spirit is in your presence and that you are led of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, I can do nothing in and of myself. And the Holy Spirit even led Jesus and helped him to teach the disciples. That's what the scripture says. And then lastly, what I have been talking about is the peace. Okay, the peace of Jesus, everything that God does. He does in a blanket of peace. And the peace mm -hmm. uh, is God's very character, very personality. And so in order to hear more from God, in order for these gifts to be even sharper and have more accuracy in your visions and your dreams, they must uh, ride on a blanket of peace. Okay, they must embrace, you must embrace the peace of God because it is in that rested state where this power and the magnitude of this seer anointing will be even more graced, okay, in you, more developed in you, in the peace of Jesus. Praise God. And so because of the power and the authority that God has assigned to your office as a prophetic seer, okay, all right, um, he has assigned this authority in you to hold back. Now, you have some great assignments in this seer anointing, and God is going to be using you to hold that judgment, okay, to hold that calamity, to stop death, okay? Mm -mm -mm. He's given you supernatural authority of the prophet of justice to bring the mm. justice of God, you know, into the earth. It's not a mistake that, that you hear a, a whole lot of people naming their kids justice now. It's because there's an anointing of the justice of God that must come forth. And as you know with justice, 
when God administers his justice, he's going to use you to do it in dreams and in visions and interpretation of those dreams and visions and in strategies based on those interpretations. But God, when he brings forth his justice, that means that something is being judged, right? Mm -hmm. When you think about justice in a court, you know, bring about justice in the court. So you have the opposing side <laughs> and then you have the right side, all right, which is God's side. And so with this authority and power that God has given you supernaturally, you are going to be judging, okay, the demonic forces that are in uh, the area that in ass of assignment that God has given you. There is a sphere of authority uh, you know, that he has given you and a territory that he's given you to govern. Now watch what he's going to do. It's all absolutely awesome. Praise God. And so um, what we want to do today is talk a little bit about the seer anointing. What is it? And we're going to be going into in the, in the, in the rest of the week, how can you access it? Okay. And how can we increase the anointing of the seer that we have already? Now this anointing is a supernatural uh, enablement. It's a supernatural enablement. Enablement. That's what the anointing is. A supernatural enablement or grace. Okay. The manifested presence of the Holy Spirit in you, by you, and through you. Operating upon and through you or an individual or a corporate group to produce the works of Jesus. Remember, even in your seer anointing, you know, even in the, the gifting that you are having to see dreams and visions, okay, remember the dreams and the visions will always point you back to Jesus. It will always point you in the direction of the word of God. They will always agree the interpretation and the purpose of the dreams and visions that you are having are always to promote Jesus Christ, okay, and the works of Jesus Christ and to produce even more of those works in you, through you, and by you. Okay, and it means this anointing, this grace, this supernatural power and authority that God has given you. It means that God is with you and in you, okay, and you are talking his talk and you are walking in his shadow. Well, who would have thunk with all those crazy dreams that you have, okay, praise God that Jesus was talking to you and Jesus is giving you these dreams giving you these visions, okay, so that you can walk his walk and talk his talk, not only for yourself, but for others, okay, that you are assigned to in the realm and the sphere of authority that you've been sent to. Isn't that awesome? So we're taking it up a whole nother level here. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been talking, like you say, real foundational. Mm -hmm. You know, we've mm -hmm. got to have peace. We know that the gifts of the Spirit are for us. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just reading in Hebrews 5, I don't know if you have that in your group, but mm -hmm. uh, 5, 13, and 14. For everyone that uses milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised right. yes. to discern both good and evil. Amen. So what does that mean? That means the Lord wants to give us eyes to mm -hmm. see and ears to hear, mm -hmm. a heart to understand. Mm -hmm. He wants us to... You, some people have their their uh, their smell increased. Mm -hmm. They can sense. They can actually smell when there's demonic activity mm -hmm. in a room. Some people, you know, of course, we've seen so many people today where the man or woman of God touches somebody on the forehead and they fall down in the mm -hmm. spirit. You know, mm -hmm. and so there's so many activities that God wants to do. Sometimes I'm praying for people and. And right in the middle of the prayer, I see a, a picture pops up, mm -hmm. and I, I have to let prophetic them know pop yep, your prophetic what pop that's ups. all about. Definitely, you know, there's a lot of different things here. So we're getting now into a little bit of the meat of the word. Yes, and uh, the, we're going to be talking about. You know, we can go to Ephesians, and and we're we're Paul's just praying. I pray that the eyes of your heart be enlightened, and everybody sees more. Amen. You know, so we're going to look at that as well. Absolutely. But it's it's mm -hmm. uh, this. Some of you were, were born this way, mm -hmm. and praise God for you. I mean, you have dreams all the time. Mm -hmm. You're seeing visions of the mm -hmm. future from a little girl or mm -hmm. a little boy, and, 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 but we want to see that train. Mm -hmm. We want to see that used. What do these pictures mean, what, and what questions to ask? Yeah, absolutely. You know? And, of course, we go back to Jeremiah, and you know, what do you see? I saw the rod of an almond mm -hmm. tree. This is what it means. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And then what do you see now? This is what I saw. This is what it means. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I, I love how you were 
uh, even when you weren't working greatly in the seer anointing, mm -hmm. people would come to you and ask for an interpretation mm -hmm. rather than blowing them off, mm -hmm. rather than letting them just go. Mm -hmm. You began to ask for the interpretation, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I have seen you work mightily. <laughs> people will call you and say, uh, you know, I've had this dream, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. You know, and you're able to give the interpretation. Yes, Hallelujah. And so, even if you don't have one part of this mm -hmm. gift or one part of that gift, you know, pray that you can work with the body of Christ to expand the gift. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You know, so many people that are afraid, so many, and, and frankly, there's so many people that have messed up uh, when they're using their gifts. Let's just be honest now, that uh, people want to just put a, uh, you know, squash, squash the whole thing. But the Bible doesn't say that. It says, you know, don't, you know, don't despise prophecies. Mm -hmm. You know, why do you think they had to say things like mm -hmm. that? Probably because people had messed up, you know, but we're going to, that's why we want to have these teachings so that you can grow in your gift, so that you can be strong, so that you can represent Christ well. Uh, we, we had a little, uh, Jonathan, just a sec. We, we, we had a little uh, game that we played where... do it to go forth in God. This is a powerful anointing, a powerful grace, a powerful gifting, you know, in the body of Christ, okay, that God has assigned for this day and time to blow out like never before. And for the most part, it's going to be used in the church, but God is sending you out into the marketplace. Do you hear what I'm saying? Praise God. Hallelujah. This is awesome. God, remember the shift that's coming in the prophetic. We've been prophesying about the shift. We've been taught, prophesying about God's new glory, new plan. God's doing a new thing, a new beginning. Well, this keen anointing, this keen and sharp, accurate anointing of the dreamer and the visionary that is the prophetic anointing that God has assigned uh, to undergird. Hallelujah, the body of Christ in these days. Praise God, hallelujah. And El Zeta is saying, I can't wait to get there. Praise God. So we're going to help you all we know and all we can to get to that place where this seer anointing, these dreams, hallelujah, that you're having, the visions that you're having have a specific interpretation. You just remember, praise God, that every dreamer and every visionary has a market, has a sphere, has a place that God has assigned for that gift to take uh, up roots, to have purpose, okay? So it's Hallelujah. not just in your local church. It can be. You can be a seer, mm -hmm. like Anna. You know, she was a seer, a prophetess in her local church. That's where she, she well, prayed. Anna was, in, Anna was yeah. in the temple. Okay, you can be a seer in business. You can be a seer, you know, in religion. You can, you can be a seer in, what was I going to say, in, in the marketplace. What are the seven mountains? Well, okay? Education, Education government. politics, government. You know, God is sending us out. There's an army of seers Arts that he's sending out. And you are even going to be like a five-star general. On the, on the, we're going to have seers in the place, you know, of advising, you know, our top leaders in the world. Praise God. God is assigning that in, in the name of Jesus. This is going to be awesome. Okay, praise God. And so we are learning now where our place, where our sphere is. 
hallelujah, who we are and what this anointing is. Now, the main purpose of the dream and vision anointing is to awaken the people of God to the spirit realm. Amen. Okay? Your spiritual assignment as a seer, as a prophetic seer, all right, is to awaken the body of Christ, the people of God, to the spirit realm. And for the most part, praise God, what you're seeing is totally spirit. Praise God, it is the spirit of God, Jesus, opening the window of the spirit realm so that you can peek in and see what he's seeing, and he's giving you that vision, okay? And so it's a dynamic gift. It's a dynamic power. It's a dynamic authority because what we must do is depend upon God to give the interpretation of what he's saying and what he's doing and what he wants. Ask Jeremiah, ask Ezekiel, okay, as God gave them the visions. You know, even Zechariah, what do you see? You know, what do you see the angel said? And he said, I don't know. I don't know what I'm seeing. And so the angel said, well, let me tell you what you're seeing. <laughs> let me tell you the purpose of what you're seeing. Praise God. And this is what has been missing in the seer anointing, that we've been getting these dreams. We've been getting these visions, but we haven't done anything with them. We don't even know what to do with them. Okay. And that's why the teaching now, God wants you to understand that everything that he shows you, Every dream that you have, every vision that you have, every trance that you go into has a purpose and a plan in the body of Christ. Praise God. And we are going to wait on the Lord. We're going to put ourselves in the position of rest and peace, okay, so that we can hear from God. So that just like the angel of the Lord, you know, was assigned to all the prophets, all the seer and prophets had, so had an angel, you know, that was telling them, that was giving them interpretations of what was going on. And of course, you know about Joseph. Okay, about Joseph and how not only did he interpret the vision, okay, praise God, he told the man, he told the man what, what the dream was, told him what his dream was and then gave him the interpretation. And not only did he give him the interpretation, gave him the purpose of the dream and then built a strategy for seven years around that dream uh, that, that the Pharaoh had. Wow, <laughs> we're going there. Hallelujah, you're going there, seer of God. That's the place that God has assigned. Not only must your visions, you know, not only must you see them, you must understand the, uh, the interpretation of them, the purpose, and then the strategy over time of what God is saying, because God is not wasting visions. You hear what I'm saying? He's not wasting these dreams. Okay. He's not just giving you a dream just so you can say, oh, I had a dream. No, there's more to it than that. Okay. And so it's a supernatural, miraculous, supernatural manifestation of the spirit that is creative, okay, and that will illuminate truth, and it will be able to confirm the direction of God. It will help people uh, establish direction in their lives, hallelujah, to what God is saying and where he wants them to go. Now, you remember what the Word of God says in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish, okay, and so God is giving you visions not only is he giving you visions, but he's going to give you visions and dreams to share with the rest of the world, okay? Not only is God implanting that vision on the inside of you, the hope on the inside of you, something that you can point to and giving you a goal, hallelujah, to set for your life in Christ, you will be able to do that for others as well. As God's, God brings this creative gifting, you know, the seer is, is very creative, very how can I say, very um, visual, very creative, all the different ways that God can interpret a vision and interpret a dream and all the different ways that he shows you the symbol, the symbolism that are in the dreams and the visions. It's really an exciting place to be in, you know, when you get something to sit before the Lord and say, wow, Lord, I saw this, I saw that. What does this mean? What does that mean? And it's just really explosive, really explosive. Hallelujah. And the power you know, that, that an authority that God is bringing in this new realm, as you heard the prophetic word that I gave from uh, Apostle Pam Archibald, okay? Now, where there is no vision, the people perish. And pe the Christians are called to be people of vision. You know, this is your call to be a person of vision, to see what God is seeing, to say what he is telling you to say, and to do what he is showing you to do. This is your call. This is your anointing. This is your grace. This is your glory as a Christian to be people of vision. Praise God. And so God is planning to do something with those visions and dreams that he has given you. Now, remember, Elisha was sustained by the vision 
okay, that he had of a double anointing. He wanted double what Elijah had. And remember Jacob, he was sustained by the dream of the angels descending back and forth in the ladder. Praise God. That was a dream and vision, open vision that he had. Praise God. Zechariah was sustained by a vision when he asked, when the angel aroused him to ask him what he saw. And he, he explained the vision to him. The angel did because he didn't know what he was seeing. And Daniel was sustained by a vision as well. Now visions... There are two types of visions and dreams that you can have. Sustaining, that's important, huh? Yeah, we're going to, I'm just giving an overview, so we're going to go over that even more so. Okay. okay, praise God. Okay, and so now what we're going to get into is the meat of the visions, the types of visions that you can have, okay? Now we have visions that are split into two different kinds, the internal kind of vision and the external vision, okay? That's internal vision and external vision, okay? The internal vision is an impression or a mental picture that we see in our mind's eye. But the picture always comes from the Lord. Okay? So you see it in your mind's eye. Okay, I get like we had talked to you and preached to you or taught you before on prophetic pop-ups and how God throughout the day is going to give you visions. And I mean, they pop up uh, in a nanosecond and you see it, you know what it is that you saw, but they come and they go so fast. All right, and so we need now to understand that as God is giving us these visions, I mean, real quick flash pop-ups, that we have the authority now to ask God what it is and what we should do about it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so the Apostle Jonathan coined them, you know, prophetic pop-ups. He's on the computer all the time and gets, you know, bothered by the pop-ups, you know, that are on the Internet. So, but we are not bothered by and not upset by prophetic pop-ups, okay? They're very important to the body of Christ. And let me tell you how important these visions are and these impressions are, okay? Uh, the internal impression, the internal vision is an impression or a mental picture that we see. When we see a picture in our mind's eye, and the picture is always from the Lord, praise God. Seeing a casket, seeing someone in a casket recently, seeing the death angel, feeling the death angel, okay? Now... Normally, this is the kind of thing in, in, you know, everyday life that can get you really upset because one of the first things you do is you think, oh, my gosh, who is it? Somebody in my family. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. No. But as a prophet, if God is revealing to you that the death angel is coming and he's showing you someone in a casket and you know, you know, that death is imminent, then you, from that vision that he has shown you, he, the reason why he's shown it to you is because you have authority over it. Remember? You have authority to tear down these strongholds. And what if he's showing you death and if you get a sense of death or if you see it, then what God is saying, I want you to pray and I want you to intercede until that, uh, you know, until that is um, until that either vision goes away or until it's satisfied in your spirit. And many times with a vision or a dream, when you see this kind of thing, you get a burden, a heaviness that goes along with it. And so as you are praying, you know that, you know, you're going to continue to pray until that heaviness goes away. Well, I just had that happen to me recently, last week, you know, uh, felt, you know, and saw a strong spirit of death and just began to intercede. And you know how you do, you go over everybody in your family, everybody you know, <laughs> you know, it's like, and I did all of that. And then I still, you know, was feeling it. And I'm saying, okay, um, what more, you know, there was more. And so the last thing and the final thing that the Lord showed me and said to me was I heard someone say, oh, I just can't believe she's gone. All right. And so that let me know that it was a woman that I was praying for. And I just continued to pray and intercede and tear down death, rebuked the spirit of death and sent it back. And that was in the morning as I was waking up, just in the few first minutes of the morning, that the Lord gave me this impression and I began to pray. And I could see death, okay? Do you know that shortly after I got up, about a half an hour, an hour later, I got a call from someone who said that their daughter was in the hospital and that she was sick unto death with pneumonia, had never had pneumonia before, and asked, asked me if I wanted to talk with her or come and pray. But do you know what? I didn't even have to talk to her, and I didn't even have to come and lay hands on her because as soon as I got that call and I was told that um, she was sick unto death, I knew that's who I had been praying for. I had already prayed for, and I just let the mother know she is fine. She's okay. All right? Everything is fine. We broke the spirit of death over her this morning. And do you know the next morning, 
she called me again, the mother, and told me, oh, she's out of the hospital. Everything is fine. <laughs> so that's just to give you a little example of how we need to be on the spot, okay, as we get these prophetic pop-ups to discern them, to ask God what to do about them, and, and to go ahead and pray and tear down those strongholds, praise God, and bring judgment into every situation that God reveals to you. Praise God in this manner and use the power and the authority that God has given you as a prophetic seer. Okay, this is where the real meat is, okay, of the anointing and grace that God has given you. This is where the rubber meets the road. In these personal private times with you and the Lord, God speaking to you and you just on your assignment, doing what it is that he called you to do, using the gifting that he has given you as a prophetic seer. Uh, praise God. And so not only are there internal um, visions and dreams, there are external visions and dreams. Now, in the external realm, we call these open visions. Open visions is when we see with our natural eyes, but often the, the vision that we see is superimposed on or over whatever is going on in the natural realm. All right, so an external vision is an open vision. You are actually seeing something with your eyes open. Oftentimes, as we've been praying and as we've been ministering, uh, Jesus will come, you know, in the room and stand, you know, in the room with me and with Jonathan. Or we will see angels, you know, ministering angels in the room. Praise God where we are. Bless the Lord. Last week, or was it week before last, while we were uh, preaching or teaching on the fire of the holy presence of God, Jesus was standing right in front of us right there. And he was all ablaze with the flames you know, of the Holy Ghost. And so these are what we call external visions. They're open visions that we see with our natural eyes, but really we're seeing them in the spirit realm, but we can see them with our natural eyes. Okay, those are in, so we have internal visions and dreams and we have external. Now there's a diversity of the visionary states, just like there are diversity of the gifts. In 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 through 11, it's talked about the nine spiritual gifts. And, and it says that we are all given one or several of the gifts. We at least have one, but there are diversities of administrations of these gifts. Okay, and so just because they're diversities, it doesn't mean that one way that you operate in your prophetic seer anointing uh, is better than someone else's. It's just the way that God has assigned you, depending upon your sphere of authority, depending upon the, the territory that he's given you to minister in as to how your gifting will work. So there's a diversity of the visionary states, just like there is a diversity of the gift, gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. Now, what we want to talk about today is the, how the New Testament uses a variety of Greek words to um, express different visionary states because they're different visionary states. And we don't want you to be ignorant of any of these visionary states that are used in the scriptures. We want you to know what these states are. We want you to know and recognize them when they come to you, when God is using you this way. And actually, we want you to understand that what you have and what you're seeing and how God is using you is not new. And what I mean is that there are other people in the scriptures who have had the same kind of experiences, experiences that you're having. Okay, so just rest assured, you be at rest and be at peace about this gifting and this anointing, this anointing that God has given you because he fully plans to use it, hallelujah, for his glory, <laughs> for his glory to be manifested in the earth and he's using you to do it. Oh, hallelujah, I just feel the surge of the anointing. Good morning, everyone who's watching, Cynthia and all of you who are, who are with us, praise God. And so the New Testament uses a variety of Greek words. In different ways, the visionary state was used in the, Old Te in the New Testament, okay? None are higher or better than the other, just different. Onar. Onar is one of them. It's, onar is dream, okay? That word is used like when you're asleep and you have a dream, okay? Dreaming while you're asleep, onar. And God uses these common dreams to communicate with ordinary people. So one way that the seer anointing will work in you, the seer vision and dreams, was when you're sleeping, and God will give you a vision or speak to you in a dream. He'll communicate to you uh, the secrets of the universe, hallelujah, while you're asleep. Praise God. And so Joseph spoke um, uh, in a dream, okay? Joseph was spoken to in a dream three times. Remember Joseph, Mary's husband, 
he had a dream. The first dream he had, the angel came to him and told him not to be afraid to marry Mary. Okay, he had another dream where God told him to get and go, get up and leave and go to Egypt because Herod wanted to kill the uh, kill Jesus as a baby. And then he had another uh, dream. Okay, uh, where he um, was given instruction. He was given instruction to marry Mary. He was given direction to go to Egypt. Okay, and he was given a warning. Warning about Herod. Okay, praise God. And yeah, and then the dream to come back home, praise God, because Herod was dead. All right. And now remember now, in the dream state as well, remember all the magi that were following the star? All three of the, the magi had the exact same dream. God spoke to them in a dream, okay? Praise God. And they knew uh, to go by another way and not to go back to Herod's place. Praise God. The second uh, dream state that is used in the New Testament, Testament, the word, the Greek word is called enupnion, enupnion, or enupnion, E-N-U-P-N-I-O-N. And that's a dream while you're asleep that stresses surprise, a surprise of God's judgment. In Acts 2.17, old men shall dream dreams, it says, okay? And this is the kind of dream that sticks with you after you wake up. It startles you. Okay, it makes your senses alert. Shocking quality of the dream that makes you remember it vividly. That is a neon kind of dream. And I know that a lot of you have had these kind of dreams because these are the kind of dreams that when people were calling me, these are the kind of dreams that they were having. Uh, something that really uh, shocked them. It caused them to remember it vividly and it startled them. So they're calling me <laughs> to tell me about the dream. Okay, and so eventually God gave me the interpretation uh, of the understanding of how to interpret these dreams when people were startled and, you know, and, and just, oh man, they didn't know what it meant, but they knew it meant something. Praise God. And so the third type of dream and vision that you can have is the harama. It's another term for vision, uh, that which is seen like a spectacle, a sight, or an appearance usually an awaking a vision when you're awake okay now remember it's an open vision remember when peter james and john saw on the mount of transfiguration jesus that's the kind of vision that that a harama is okay and remember ananias ananias received his instructions to go to paul okay and then there's the vision that cornelius had Praise God. These are all the forms of harama visions, the way that God can come and reveal to you. Uh, um, it's another term for a vision which is seen, okay, like a spectacle or a sight, usually a waking vision, like Peter, James, and John saw Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. The fourth kind of dream that we're going to talk about is ecstasis or a trance-like dream. And the trance-like dream, okay, is in Acts 10, verse 9 through 16. That's Acts 10, 9 through 16. It's a trance, okay? And in the ecstasia, it is, it is brought to us uh, through John, okay? Through John the Revelator. John was in ecstasy or ecstasis when he uh, received the vision of the revelation. Now remember, the book of Revelation was all vision. It was a vision that John had seen, okay? And so that is the trance state. And I know many of you have been into a trance. Sometimes the last trances I've been in, like maybe five or six or seven of them in the last six or seven months. But when the kinds of trances that the Lord brings me to is the kinds of trances where he is... Uh, speaking to me about ministry and about my life, you know, that kind of thing and, and what he plans to do, you know, through me. Praise God. And so here we have another state of the seer where you can go into a trance and God can give you visions and dreams through the trance state. Now in the trance state, okay, you're, you are like not here. Your body is here, but your mind, your spirit is somewhere else. And it's locked in with God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so that's called the ecstasis, ecstasis, or ecstasis, or the trance kind of 
um, a realization of the seer mantle and seer anointing. And these are all different types of visions that you've probably seen already, but believe me, you are going to be involved in even more of them. Okay? Paul received direction for ministry while in a visionary state. He was in a trance, okay, and, and seeing a vision, an outward vision. And that vision led him uh, to, and it led to the gospel entering Eastern Europe for the first time. That's one of the, uh, the uh, trances that Paul was in as God gave him ministry direction through the trance. Okay, so we have horasis, H-O-R-A-S-I-S. This is sight or vision, external or internal, and regarded as genuine perception in the New Testament. And we have to set our eyes, physical and spiritual, okay? We have to set our eyes, whether physical or spiritual, to see, okay? And the spiritual area is when we see with our heart. Of course, we see physically with our natural eyes, but we want to see in the spiritual realm with our spiritual eyes, praise God. And we want to see all spiritual truth. And that's what God is doing. He's cleaning up our eyes. He's cleaning up our receptors so that we can see even more of what he sees. He's bringing us to the place where he's giving us more of his, his vision, okay, what he sees and what he wants. Hallelujah. Praise God. And Paul referred to uh, this in Ephesians 1.18. And I think the man of God uh, quoted this scripture earlier, that I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. The eyes of your heart. Now, as a seer, okay, as a prophetic seer, you are seeing. When you see, you are seeing with the eyes of your heart. You have spiritual sight from God himself, always led by the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are leading these visions, hallelujah, these trances and these dreams that you have, all for the purpose of the edifying of the body, for the building of the kingdom of God, bringing his supernatural glory and grace not only into the kingdom of God, but into the world. As we know, we have a new assignment now as the seers of God to proliferate this anointing and grace into the marketplace. Hallelujah. And then we have the optasia. Optasia. That's the O-P-T-A-S-I-A. -A. This is a Greek word. Hallelujah. In the scriptures in the New Testament, meaning seeing a divine or spiritual personage. Okay. Praise God like Zechariah sees Gabriel while in the temple, while he's doing his work in the temple. And he tells him that he's going to have a son, and that's uh, John the Baptist's father, okay? On the road to Emmaus, remember? After Jesus uh, was risen, the risen Jesus appeared uh, to the two on the road to Emmaus. That is called an optasia, where you are actually seeing, hallelujah, a divine or spiritual personage. Okay, and that personage that you are seeing is speaking to you and you are speaking back to them. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many of you have had all of these experiences already? Well, get ready because the reason why God is blowing this out in you is because he's planning to come to you in many different ways. And then we have the apocalyptus, the apocalyptus, you know, most used frequently in the New Testament okay, to describe a visionary state of revelation, of disclosure, and it carries a sense of something that has been hidden, that has now been discovered. Oh, hallelujah, how many of you have had those, you know, that light, that light bulb go off in your head when a spiritual matter, oh, has been, you've been, you've gained that understanding, and then all of a sudden you went from not knowing to knowing, okay, and it's like a revelatory anointing and grace that God gives you, okay, where one second you didn't know it, and, and then the next sec second you know. And this is an area that God wants to develop because he wants to give you divine knowledge. You know, knowledge that is learned from your own efforts is one thing, but when you get divine understanding, divine knowledge, you know, like when, um, when Daniel was brought into uh, the palace where they did a search for young men who were smart and who had understanding in all areas of knowledge and literature and in math in all areas. And so they chose Daniel and the other three boys, you know, to come and to be groomed and to be mentored in the king's, you know, in the king's palace for service to the king. Well, we know and we understand, you know, that the knowledge that Daniel and those three other boys had in that, in that 
Shadrach, Meshach, and a big Negro, I mean, and a bed Negro, <laughs> they had knowledge, divine knowledge from God. So there's another anointing, knowledge that you get because you're seeking it, you're studying it, okay, and that's great. But there's a place of anointing and grace in this seer prophetic anointing that God is sending forth the prophetic seer, where knowledge that God is going to give you is going to be divine. It's coming from him. There's no other way that you could have known it. It's supernatural knowledge that he's bringing to you, supernaturally knowing. And we have, remember now, as we're talking about, you know, these gifts and the way that they manifest, you know, in the internal and the external visions and dreams, that is all supernatural. It's all through the gift of the discerning of spirits, the word of wisdom, and the word of knowledge. Praise God, and it's all supernatural. It's divinely coming from God, supernaturally, touching down, smacking down, you know, on you, hallelujah, in you and through you as the instrument of his judgment on earth, as the instrument of his authority, grace, and glory on earth. That's where God is taking us. And there's one more that I want to talk about with you today. Okay, it's called the, um, the I, I'm going to have a hard time saying this, but I'm going to try to say it. It's Greek, and it's the edgy nomen. It's the edgy nomen en pneumatis. The edgy nomen en pneumatis. Okay, and John uses this term to describe, you know, when he was caught up in the spirit. <laughs> Praise God. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Oh, hallelujah. This is another grace, another anointing, another way that the prophetic seer, the prophetic seer anointing, you know, is distributed on the earth to men. Praise God that the spirit can catch you up. Hallelujah. Okay. And when he was caught up in the spirit, he received the vision of the revelation. All right. And another way that, that where this term was used is when Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Praise God. And so today we talked about the seer anointing and what it is. We talked about different places where it's assigned in the scriptures. Oh, hallelujah. We talked about the different um, cloud of witnesses that we have that are actually seers. Okay, Gad and Samuel was called a seer. Praise God. We have Joseph and we have Daniel. Okay, all of these men were seers. And we were, I had spoken about going into the book of Ezekiel and looking at all the visions that God had given him and the strategies that he had given him in those visions as a result of those visions and the purpose of the visions that God had given Ezekiel. Okay, but to, to, to uh, close up today and to recap today, the seer anointing, and what is it, okay? A supernatural gifting from God to see what God sees and for you to do according to what God is showing you, okay? To say what it is that he's showing you or giving you or that you hear from him. Jesus said, I can do nothing in and of myself. He wants you to understand that your dreaming and your gift of visionary or to be a visionary is not wasted, okay? This gifting is, he has not given the gifting to you in a void, okay? He plans, hallelujah, to use this gifting to his benefit, all right? To the benefit of the body of Christ. And every dreamer and visionary has a market and a sphere that they can influence. And so this anointing has been given to you to influence the world, to change the world as world changers, okay? As atmosphere uh, changers, as changing destinies of people who have the devil has an assignment on their life that God is sending you in to make changes in their destiny to bring them to to God himself oh hallelujah you have an authority and a grace that God is increasing in you you know in this particular realm as he sharpens it as he makes it more keen as he makes it more accurate you cannot lay down on this gift, but as God is revealing to you what these dreams and visions are, as he gives you the purpose, there's also an assignment that goes along with it to destroy the works of the evil one while at the same time promoting God's glory in the earth wherever you go. And so you want to, with the gifting that God has given you, to create a culture for more revelation from God. You want to be in a place where you can get more and more from him. And please remember 
that as we taught about peace over the last few weeks, praise God, that peace is the cradle for the spirit of revelation that God wants to bring you through these gifts of dreaming, through these gifts uh, of the visionary, okay? And so we're going to be talking about uh, this week, learning how to filter away the demonic, okay? God uses our imaginations. And if you have vain imaginations, if you have a mind that's full of uh, unclean imaginations, you know, you're going to need to know how to discern what is the imagination that God is using, okay, and what imaginations that didn't come from God. So we're going to go into that. So we're going to teach you going forward on how to filter away the demonic, you know, uh, by watching your eye gates, okay, and your imaginations keeping them pure because God uses our imagination as seers. That is the main place of your anointing and grace as a seer, your imagination. God created your imagination so he could be full in you, so that you could be full in him. Your imagination was assigned and created by God for this anointing, for this grace, so that you can see him like nobody else can see him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Your imagination must, you know, bespeak the glory of God, the purity of God, and the holiness of God. Hallelujah. So let's cleanse our imaginations. Let's yield our thoughts and our minds to his holy presence. Let's conform, you know, to the image of Christ even more so, so that that blanket and that launching pad, or, you know, the platform of God's glory through more revelation can be given to you. Hallelujah. As you have cleansed out constantly your imaginations. Okay. So God speaks to us in this way. And so we're going to learn how to sanctify it, how to set it apart, hallelujah, how to have that purity of holiness, okay, so that we can give our imaginations to God and he can use them in this seer, this great seer time that's coming. I am so pumped on this, praise God, hallelujah. I am so excited about uh, what God is doing. And I read the prophecy from um, Apostle Pam Archibald here in the Phoenix area. She also happens to be a lawyer who is an apostle of God. Praise God. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to read that word.
attacked by the enemy. Uh huh. And we're going to talk about that too, how to discern, you know, the difference between your imagination and a pizza dream and a true dream from the Lord. Praise God. And he will attack you in this area. But that's okay with this anointing. It is a breakthrough anointing. It is a supernatural anointing that God is bringing to divide asunder, okay, the demonic and him. There's no way he can give you a gift, okay? He wouldn't give you a gift and then throw you to the wolves and let the enemy just take over that gift and leave you in confusion over what God has given you. That's not the kind of God that we serve. He hasn't given you this gift in a void, and he hasn't given you this gift for the enemy to stomp all over you either, okay? So you are going to stand up in your confidence and your boldness and in your awareness and in your knowledge of who you are in Christ and who he is in you. And not only... Uh, do you, will you have the confidence and the boldness to stand, you know, as a seer in vision and dreams in God, but you will know that you will have the right to do it. It is your right to do it by God because that's the DNA that he's given you. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Henry, the Apostle Knox saying it, show, it shows up like fire. You will sweat. It's that strong. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he's given us some more information here on how this, this uh, seer anointing, oh, glory to God, is going to manifest in the diversities of the ways that God will give you this grace and this anointing. I feel of the, I'm feeling the fire right now, the fire, the very fire presence of the Lord himself is with us today. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He's pouring out that anointing right now. Reach up and grab it in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. As we are creating a culture of revelation, okay, a culture of revelation to understand the revelation of God, okay, where peace is the cradle of the spirit of revelation. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's the peace of Jesus that, that uh, surpasses all understanding. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying, uh, we have a lot more to teach you, a lot more to tell you. This is in depth. We're going to get even more detailed, you know, as we go over some of our heroes, you know, that have had this specific gift and calling. And one of my favorites, of course, outside of Jesus, hallelujah, is Ezekiel. Powerful call uh, into the ministry uh, with the visions uh, that he had from day one. Praise God. And then those visions continue throughout his life as a prophet, okay, as a prophet of God, he was a seer, and God would show him all kinds of visions with all kinds of prophetic understandings, and some people believe that some of those visions haven't even come to pass yet, that they're for this day and for this time, but we'll take a look at the book of Ezekiel as well as we go forth in this study on the seer, and our focus will be the prophetic anointing, you know, that comes through um, and is proliferated and diversified in the seer. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that's right, Cindy. So in your seer anointing, have an expectation to see. Have an expectation to dream. Have an expectation that you are going to hear from God. You are going to see what he's showing you. And that you are, will have an understanding of what he's showing you in these very creative visions and dreams that he gives us, whether they're internal or whether they're external. No matter what sense that you are receiving them in on, on your natural sense, on your spiritual sense. Hallelujah. <laughs> Apostle Henry Knox said he was driving down the street and he had to pull over a minute. <laughs> Praise he God. said, release it, y'all. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And we know that Apostle Henry Knox has a strong seer mantle on him. Praise God. And remember now, it can come in different, different ways. And as I explained to you before with me, Jonathan is a seer as well, but his, it's, not the, it's not the main focus of his anointing and grace. Praise God. I'm about one-third seer and two-thirds, you know, non-seer prophetic, okay? Praise God. And so, praise God. God gives me visions. He gives me dreams. He gives me prophetic pop-ups. He lets me see stuff. And this is constant all day, every day. Well, not maybe all day, 24-7, but I'm on uh, for him to reveal to me whatever he wants to reveal to me. And whenever he does, I hop on it for understanding, for clarification, interceding and praying, okay, as he shows it to me. And so, praise God. 
And so, and I know that we have been asking for an increase of the seer gifting and mantle because it's so important in these last days that it, a sharper discerning of spirits is coming forth. That's one of the mag magnificent things of this new grace and anointing that God has given. That that sharpness and discerning of spirits, okay, and knowing good from evil, knowing where people's hearts are, knowing men's hearts, <laughs> praise God. Because as the word came forth from the apostle Pam Archibald, um, God is going to use this seer gift even more so in the area of deliverance. You know, praise God, <laughs> hallelujah. Not only are the demons, you know, going to be seeing you because they know who you are, you're going to be seeing them, you know. And it's said that even like, you know, we have been so dumb and so dull to the giftings and anointings that God has given us, you know, the witches who are coming against the body of Christ, they know who we are 10 miles away. A mile away, they can tell who we are. But our eyes haven't been uh, open and our understanding, our spiritual understanding hasn't been open to detect them. Well, this is what's coming. Everything that's coming against you and against the body of Christ, God is going to start opening your eyes up to it. And we are praying right now for an anointing right now in Jesus' name to come for increase in these giftings. Hallelujah. That you will see like you never saw before. We have a, you know, a testimony from Jonathan. I forgot Jonathan's last name, but he's a, a young man who is, is uh, teaching on, on, on the Sears and has a few books out. Um, he said that, you know, he had studied everything that he needed to study and, and he was a reader. So he had read over 150 books, you wow. know, in this particular area. But it wasn't until he got down to a certain place uh, where he was ministering and um, a person with that seer anointing laid hands on him and spoke over him. And for a whole month, he was having vision and dreams 24-7, mm. 24-7. Mm. A whole month and then when it started to wane you know God started talking to him he says oh the guy was saying that was just your little introduction that's you know that's just <laughs> I just I was just introducing you to get you ready to get you to understand you know this this uh, anointing and grace that I've given you and to get you to understand how to see because he didn't have a clue he was just seeing stuff and didn't know what he was seeing it was very confusing very and he didn't understand it you know and frightening you know because of all that he was seeing stuff fire on bookcases, fire, you know, uh, glows around, halos around people. I mean, he was just seeing in the spirit realm big time. And so um, then as it waned, you know, his the visions that he was having as they waned, then God set him aside and began to teach him about what he was seeing and how the gifting works, praise God. And so that's what we're praying for you. That same anointing, hallelujah, that, that we are imparting today will come to you the same way. And that you will begin from this point on to even see more into the spirit realm. Praise God that God is opening up your spiritual eyes and your spiritual understanding and the place that's in your heart where he is seated. So that Jesus now, hallelujah, the Jesus that lives on the inside of you is going to open the windows, okay, into the spirit realm and let you see what he sees. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. This is going to be a good time. <laughs> We're going to have a good time with this. And then at some point this week, and I think probably on Friday, I don't want to name a day, but as the Lord releases, we're going to actually interpret some dreams. We're going to talk about dreams, and then we're going to do some interpretation of dreams and visions as well. So that's all a part of it. Praise God, all a part of the gifting that God has for you in the prophetic seer. The one who is the dreamer, <laughs> praise God, who dreams dreams, okay, who sees visions, praise God, hallelujah. And now with the purification of the Holy Spirit, as you cultivate the presence of God, cultivate the Holy Ghost, cultivate his holiness, okay, cultivate his peace, he is bringing you even more understanding in this area opening up your eyes even more so isn't that awesome Praise it's, it's amazing Ooh. in scripture oh, there are especially in the old testament especially mm -hmm. at the beginning mm -hmm. there are conversations with angels mm -hmm. there are visions there are dreams there are open visions you know uh i was even <clears throat> the lord you know gave me an insight into mm -hmm. abraham something i have never even thought about before uh just just this week and it's like you know, the Lord wants to open our minds, he wants does. to open he us, really does. Uh, give us an understanding. Mm -hmm. And then he includes in Ephesians those great verses uh, where Paul's writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. What does he want for the church? Mm -hmm. What does he want for the, the, the church in Ephesus? 
you know, he says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, mm -hmm. that you may know what is the hope of his calling mm -hmm. and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Amen. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power Amen. to us were to believe Amen. according to the working of his mighty power. You know, and it just goes on and on mm -hmm. and on and on. Praise Hallelujah. And, and some of you that are, uh, you know, doubting this whole thing exists or mm -hmm. things like that, understand how the Holy Spirit is bringing us along. There was a, a number of years ago, I was thinking about this this morning, mm -hmm. uh, there was a song that came out. Do you remember this one? Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. See you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. As we sing, holy, holy, holy. The Lord is preparing us in this way, songs that, this, that are calling us to open our eyes, open our hearts of understanding. Yes. You know, have that verse I read in Hebrews about uh, having our senses trained. You know, our senses, That's what are our senses? But eye, ear, nose, and throat, you know, is the... the and, and, touch. and so what we're going to be talking about that tomorrow, we're going to be going into the senses and how the Holy Spirit, you have senses, you have five senses in the natural, but you also have five senses in the spiritual. So we're going to go into a little bit of detail about how God uses all of your senses on each level, spiritual, natural, and how you have five in each area. And how even in the spirit realm, when you see colors, when you can taste taste, and when you can smells, all of these are spiritual senses, hallelujah, of the, of the spirit realm that God is going to be using with you as prophetic seers. And I'm sure that you probably experienced a lot of these things already, but we're going to go into some very specific and detailed teaching on it as well. Hallelujah, to get Praise you prepared God. for the new glory, for the new anointing that God is releasing. And remember, when one of the things that I'm really excited about is the word of wisdom and knowledge for deliverance. It's one thing to have a word of wisdom and knowledge that I'm going to get a house and a car. <laughs> but it's another thing for God to use the word of wisdom and knowledge on you to get somebody set free from demonic forces that are troubling them. You, you know, okay? So I see you have this problem. I see you have that problem. I see this demon following you. Oh, I see that you don't hear so well. Oh, I see this illness in your body. You know, praise God. And since I see it, Okay, praise God. God has given me a vision of it. I can actually see that tumor that's on your lung. I can see it in the spirit realm. And if I can see it, God has given me the authority to destroy that thing. Oh, hallelujah. Casey and Ooh. Shelley know what we're talking yeah, about. So, all right. it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. nasty smell. Okay, so what do you do when you smell them? Yeah. Okay, so that's the thing. It's not now enough just to smell them anymore. Okay, now we got to know what to do Amen. when we smell them because God has given you that insight. He's given you that gifting because you have power and authority over whatever is causing that foul smell. Even if you just sprinkle some perfume on it. <laughs> That's right, Casey. You cast them out when you smell them. Mama say, knock you out. You know, <laughs> Get out of here. So all of the giftings, all the things that you see, hallelujah, is for a purpose. They are not, they've not been given to you in a void, okay? There's an assignment for every scent, everything that you see in the spirit realm. There is an assignment of God's glory on that thing. You hear what I'm saying? Oh, this is going to be really good. I'm excited. <laughs> Praise God. I, ooh, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so. So we'll let you go. Moving along here, God bless you this morning. Amen. Thank you for all your teaching Amen. there, Prophet. We have so much more that, that uh, we want to share. Mm -hmm. Remember, the Lord loves you. He says, go after the best gifts. Praise God. God yes. Amen. Don't be unaware. Praise God. Do everything in love, mm -hmm. but desire earnestly the best gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Hallelujah. And this is under the category of prophesy. This is the, the seer and the prophetic anointing. Hallelujah. Working together. Amen. And remember, tomorrow we're going to be going over um, how do you know that you're operating you know, in what God is showing you and not that a pizza dream. You know, how do you know what you're seeing is absolutely from God? 
and not an ungodly imagination. So we're going to be going into some detail about that tomorrow. Okay, praise God. Amen. And Cindy, thank you so much uh, for being with us. Hallelujah. Mm, he's going to give you more, Cindy. He's giving you more. You've been praying for more. You've been seeking more. You've been hungry for more. And that anointing is increasing. Okay. I'm going to pray for you, and then I'm going to ask the prophet to tell you how to uh, get a hold of yeah, us. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and pray because you want to do the garbage, right? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Praise God. Jonathan had to leave it. So it's the day after the holiday, and so he didn't take the, the trash out to the road so, so the trash people could take it because yesterday was a holiday, so... <laughs> we forgot <laughs> so right now father in the name of jesus yes cindy yes cindy the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened god is going to use you tremendously you know in this particular area as a seer and god is increasing that anointing in you uh, even as we speak right now in the name of jesus now cindy this is what the lord is showing me for you i see three angels that have been assigned to you and i see them with you right now praise god and uh the one behind you and you have two on either side of you and they're reaching out right now and they're laying their hands on you there's an increase of joy that's coming your way an increase of authority uh that's coming for you and these angels the lord has assigned to you are angels of his authority and they are actually breaker angels that are going to bring you to the place uh, the, where you need to have a breakthrough and the angels have been assigned to go before you but they're not going to go way ahead of you and break up what where you need the breakthrough they're going to be just a couple of steps in front of you because God wants you to see the miraculous power that he's going to be sending through them and by them he wants you to understand how he has worked these miracles and so you're going to see it and you're going to know it. Now, there are angels that work behind the scenes for us, but these angels are going to work right in front of you, and you are going to know that it's God. You're going to know that you know that you know that it's God, and in this way, God is building your faith, and he's building the platform and the stability, you know, of the call and ministry that he's given you. Remember, there are three angels uh, that have been assigned to you uh, in the name of Jesus. That's for you, Cindy, Cindy Johnson. Uh, praise God. God gave me that specifically uh, for you this morning. And so we bless the Lord for all of you. Praise God. <laughs> Increases on the way. Thank you so much for being with us. Hallelujah. Yes, he will. He will definitely use you. There's no two ways about it. Okay. Praise God. Uh, yes, Raymond Ward can. Yes, he will. Praise God. Uh, hallelujah. Hmm. Praise God. For Cindy, Shelley, Ken, Casey, praise God. Thank you all for joining me this morning. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Thank you. So we praise you. We feel that anointing. I, I'm just waiting on the Lord to see if he has any other words to give uh, anyone else. And you are blessed just by hearing this word and being on the call. So you are hungry for this place of God. He's called you a seer. You know you're a seer, and he's going to proliferate that anointing and grace in you. And big time. Big, big, big time, okay? So, until tomorrow, praise God. This is Prophet Tina, and uh, we will see you tomorrow, okay? 5 o'clock in the morning, Phoenix time, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Adjust your time zones uh, in between, and we are going to continue in our teaching and in the anointing of the seer, the seer anointing. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so we thank you again for joining us. God bless all of you. Hallelujah. Let's give God some glory this morning. This is an assignment that he's given us for you. This is for you. Hallelujah. So someone is saying, pray for me because I'm sick. Okay, so let's pray. We got a, um, a notice on Periscope. One of our Periscope people is asking for prayer. So come on, all of you. Praise God, all of you who knows the word of prayer. Let's pray for uh, our... our um, caller on periscope praise god who's watching the stream this morning oh hallelujah praise god let us know where you're from we're going to send the angels of healing unto you this morning praise god we this word of god says that if there's any sick among you you know call for the elders of the church and of course they'll lay hands on you anoint you with oil pray the prayer of faith and you will be healed so we can't 
lay hands on you, but we can send the oil of the Holy Spirit unto you, the oil of healing, the oil of God's grace to your body this morning, right now in Jesus' name, as we cover you in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The word of God says that by the stripes that Jesus received, you are healed. And we believe that you are healed because, beloved, the word of God tells us he wishes above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So we pray good health to you right now. We pray the anointing of health to come and to, uh, to cover you right now in your body and to remove every spirit of infirmity away from you, every unclean spirit and familiar spirit that's talking to you even about your health. Praise God. The fears that you have concerning your health, you know, getting the things that's on your bloodline, that kind of fear. We rebuke that fear right now in the name of Jesus and we assign uh, the angelic host of healing to come unto you to heal your body totally and completely and that you will walk refreshed in the knowledge that God is your healer, that he causes you and your body to be healed. It is he who has designed health and healing for our bodies in the name of Jesus. And we, we as everyone is praying with us, Hallelujah. You have people on live stream, live me, live star, and um, Facebook, the Prophets Teaching Group, who's praying for you this morning, as well as our viewers on Periscope. And so we're believing God for your speedily recovery right now in the name of Jesus. Praise God. And someone's asking me to pray for their daughter. Let's see what we got here. Hold on. Let me see. Who's that? Okay, pray for my daughter. That's Henry, Apostle Henry, enemy attacking her mind. Okay, we're coming against every spirit of insanity right now that's attacking Henry's daughter, Apostle Henry's daughter right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we send forth your ministering angels to her right now as we even did a prayer the other night coming against the spirit of insanity. Praise God, hallelujah, erroneous thinking mindsets that are not of you, familiar spirits that, uh, that, that people listen to rather than listening to your word and your truth. And we speak the word of truth over her, that the truth of God will move uh, the demonic oppression on her mind right now in the name of Jesus so that she thinks the thoughts of God, hallelujah, that she will have the mind which was also in Christ Jesus who thought it not robbery to be equal with God but took of himself no reputation and became a servant's heart over her in the name of Jesus, that as she serves God by believing his word, by believing her son, his son's word, praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah, whatever you ask to it, that it gets done by the Father in heaven. We honor you today, Jesus, on her behalf, in her mind and heart right now, that only you can stabilize Jesus right now. So stabilize her thinking, stabilize her mind through the peace of Jesus, the peace that comes from God, hallelujah. In Christ Jesus, we speak peace over her right now in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you all praying with me? Agreeing with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray that yet yeah, body functions, Shelly said, in the perfection of God created it to function. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you all. Praying he for healing right now, Tammy. Thank you. It is finished. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, hallelujah, for praying with us. Hallelujah, we got some power prayers on the line today. We got power prayers on the stream today on um, the Prophets Teaching Group Live. These are some powerful folks for praying. And so that we've all prayed for you. We prayed for Apostle Henry's daughter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, and Casey's saying, I have 24 hours to hear from the Lord on if I have to give a 30-day notice and move or not. So we're with you on this, Casey, and we see... From your testimonies that God has not left you alone hallelujah and he has never left you alone he's with you and so we bring this situation before him as well we yield uh, your uh, your living situation to him your financial situation to him and he always provides hallelujah praise God and so we hold you up before him and we strengthen you in the strength that God has called you to have in faith in this situation Praise God. Hallelujah. So God, increase Casey's faith even more so, Father. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we pray. As she stands in this situation, we're asking you to bring it together for her, Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Be done. 
Whoa, I just felt an anointing go forth on that, Casey. Wow, praise God. Woo, glory to God. I know the Lord is with all of us. He's with you, Casey, and he's with all of us. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Anybody else before we get off this morning? And remember, when we get off, we do have the poster prayer line on Facebook. Just go ahead and post your prayer request. And we have some power prayers. <laughs> Uh, power prayers. I mean, they pray with the power of God that are on our um, uh, poster prayer and they will pray for your needs as well. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, you know, just to saturate the spirit realm, saturate the spirit realm, you know, with your prayer requests, you know, continually, as they said in the old days, to send up the timber. Jesus said, man ought always to pray and not to faint, pray without ceasing. He taught us how to pray. He was constantly praying. He is our method man. He gave us the method. Hallelujah. He showed us the way. He is our model. Continue to pray. Hallelujah. Always and don't give up. Never give up in your heart on what the word of God says. You are healed. You are blessed. He supplies all of your needs. Hallelujah. This is all true. This is all true. No matter what's going on in your life, the word of God is true and will always be true. Praise God. So we pray according to what his word says that never changes, not our circumstances, okay? All right, praise God. You give your circumstances to him and let him fix them. Praise God. Power, power of the Holy Ghost come forth and manifest. The same power that was wrought in Christ Jesus when he was raised from the dead. We're calling on that power, resurrection power. And in today's world, we're calling it, hallelujah, the, um, the power of What's the greatest power on earth? You know, the H-bomb, right? Hydrogen bomb, atomic bomb. We're calling on 50 million atomic bomb powers to blow the enemy up out of the water, to blow him away from your life, from your health, from your finances, from your living situations. Yeah, that's the kind of power that God has. And that's the power that we're calling on right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Atomic bomb power. Amen. Praise God. An apostle, I see apostle. Lady Charmaine has joined us with us. Oh, Twinkle Eyes Apostle. That's my nickname for her. <laughs> Praise God. Good morning, woman of God. We love you all here. <laughs> Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I'm trying to get off the stream. Praise God. But you guys keep drawing on the anointing. I haven't left yet. Okay. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Whoa. There it goes again. There's another wave that's coming. Reach out and grab it for whatever you need it for. Wow. Oh, this is a big wave. Woo. Glory. Ha. Huh? Whoa, felt that wave. <laughs> Hallelujah, it's coming. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah, look at that. Someone giving a testimony. Was that you, Shelly? My heart stopped and God raised me up just this weekend. Oh, yeah. That's the God we serve. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, praise God. You guys are just, you know, you guys are just hungry for the anointing, aren't you? You guys are just greedy. <laughs> praise God. God. Oh, hallelujah. Hmm. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Whatever that grace is, God is not revealing. Ooh. Oh, hallelujah. I was going to say something, but he stopped me. Oh, wow. There it is. It's pouring out. Here comes another wave. Here comes another wave. Grab it. Grab it. Oh, hallelujah. Grab it. There's another wave. There it is. Woo. Hmm. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Another wave. Wow. Wow. Feel that flow. That's right, Felicia. <laughs> Let it continue to flow. Kenneth is saying, fire, fire, fire. <laughs> wow. Woo. Woo. Oh, hallelujah. We know that it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. And a lot of times we just want to talk and say something. God shut my mouth a minute ago. He's just letting me do the work here. Okay, I'm letting him do it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I'm just learning how to be an instrument of his glory. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. You're still here. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the devil is a liar, but every word of God is true. That's right, Apostle Lady Charmaine. The refreshing. Let the Holy Spirit just wave over you and refresh you. It is the anointing that will destroy every yoke of bondage. One of the things that I did when I was uh, 
uh, had cancer for two and a half years, every time someone came by within three or four hours drive of me that had a strong anointing uh, for uh, destroying the yokes of, of uh, sickness, I would make sure that I was in their presence. Okay, in the presence of that anointing, because we know the word tells us, hallelujah, that is the anointing that destroys the yoke. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So let the Lord work. Let the anointing destroy the yoke. Lift up uh, these uh, yokes that you have to the Lord right now and let them be broken in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord, there's liberty. Hallelujah. Oh, liberty. Oh, liberty. Freedom come forth. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. It's all over me. The fire, I'm burning up. Whoa. Woo. Oh, glory. Hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Whoa, my hands are burning up. My hands are on fire. So I'm, I'm sending that fire to you in the, in the area of healing. Healing. Come, whoa, whoa, whoo. Anointing in the hands. <laughs> Who else is getting that anointing in their hands out there? Woo, glory. Casey said, I used to have food allergies with the HIV. Past three weeks, none. Yes, go, God. Yay. Let's give the Lord a hand up on that one. Yes, Casey. Yes. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Oh, she eats everything that used to have me in pain for hours. Listen, girl, that's one of my pets. I pray for allergies. I hate allergies, okay? Because people pet the allergies. They receive them like it's their arm or something. You know, they wear it like a badge, you know, of courage or something. Oh, I have an allergy. If we, you know, forget that. Allergy is demonic, okay? I believe that it comes from demonic spirits. Okay, and the Lord proved it to me when I developed an allergy when I moved out, you know, to Arizona. And the allergy was for cilantro. All the while I was in Connecticut, I ate cilantro. What's going on out here? Uh, that I would get deathly sick, you know, from eating cilantro. And so as I prayed and believed for other people to be delivered from food allergies, God delivered me as well. Praise God. And the Lord let me know when it left. I felt a spirit lift up off of me. And that's not how I know. That's how I know food allergies are demonic. They're from the devil and not of God. Stop accepting them. You have a healing grace from God. He heals you of all your diseases. Allergies is a disease. They're a disease. Praise God. The body is not supposed to have allergies. So rebuke that stuff. Cleanse yourself from those demonic forces. Hallelujah. That show up in allergies and you just accept them like they're nothing. You know, like you're supposed to have them. Uh-uh-uh. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Praise God. Healing still going on in the house. Deliverance still going on in the house for allergies. Yes, praise God. Food allergies, all kinds of allergies. Asthma, we rebuke asthma right now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke asthma. Hallelujah. God has given us the breath of life through Christ Jesus. Life more abundantly and asthma does not fit in that category. It's illegal in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And so we curse asthma at its roots right now. In the name of Jesus, we curse those chest pains right now, Apostle Henry. Right now, we rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Those are phantom pains. They don't mean anything. They're from the enemy himself. Hallelujah. And we rebuke you right now. We rebuke the fear of them. You cannot have Apostle Henry's body any longer. And we command you to go in the name of Jesus. Whoa. Oh, hallelujah. Every familiar spirit, every spirit of witchcraft that's hovering around him, that's associating around him hallelujah you cannot step into the sphere anymore of glory and anointing that god has given him and we call on the blue anointing I, I haven't done this before the blue light anointing for apostle henry that the emanating uh, light of the glory of god around you will not allow those familiars to come in your territory any anywhere near you and affect anything in your body they don't have a right anymore in the name of jesus and we command them to go Hallelujah. We know that, Shelly. Thank you. It is an attack of the enemy. We know that. Hallelujah. And we rebuke him right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, you guys. Let us let us uh, join in in agreement uh, for Apostle Henry right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. We glorify your holy name for you are worthy you are worthy to be praised. Thank you for your healings. Thank you for your deliverances. Oh, hallelujah. Mm, asthma, we cast you down. Get out. 
demonic forces that bring asthma, we command you to go. Hallelujah. We rebuke every generational curse of asthma, every demon and familiar spirit that comes along with this attack on the, on the health, the breathing, and the lungs. Hallelujah. Right now in Jesus' name, we command you to go. And we blow the breath of God. And every breathing issue, hallelujah, that is within earshot of my voice, hallelujah, be made whole in Jesus' name. We speak the breath of life into your lungs. When Kenneth is saying he sees the blue light of glory, there you go, seer. There you go. There's that seer anointing. I had never prayed that before. Ken, I want you to know, never. That was the first time, and the Holy Spirit had me pray that. Hallelujah. And he's seeing the blue light of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for that blue light of deliverance. Hallelujah. It's a light that will keep out the demonic forces. It's a light of power, but give us even more understanding on how the blue light of your glory works for us. In the name of Jesus, how are we to utilize it even more so, Father? Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. And even though it's sovereign at this time, you're giving it to us in a sovereign way by your divine uh, intervention. But Father, show us how to use this light as a power tool and a power weapon, you know, in the kingdom of God. We want to use all the weapons that are in your armor because you've released them. According to um, Jeremiah 50, 25, you've released and you've opened the armory of the weapons of your indignation, it says in Jeremiah 50, 25. And if, and, and, and if this is one of them, Father, show us how to use this too, how to use this weapon for your glory in the earth. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Felicia is saying, I receive your healing on my body in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And Cindy saying, we speak light, light, love. Hallelujah. Light, love. Hallelujah. Lift us up out of the darkness as you have already done through Christ Jesus. We are out of darkness. So let us put darkness on the run because you said that you've uh, put us into the kingdom of light through our belief in Christ Jesus. We've been delivered into the kingdom of light, into the kingdom of your dear son, sin and death. Darkness have no more dominion over us. Whoa, illegal in the new kingdom, in the new seat that you've given us. Whoa, hallelujah. So we speak our legal rights. Hallelujah. And Henry is also, Apostle Henry has asked God, what does blue mean? Then having flashes of blue when I close my eyes. Yes, there we go. Oh, hallelujah. This is going to be a good one. Okay, because God brought it up. So he means to give us more information on it. So why don't we pray on it? Why don't we, blue is healing, Casey says. Praise God. So why don't we pray on it and ask God as a, as a lesson, you know, in our teachings this week for us uh, to get more understanding, for him to give us more understanding. It can come from all of us, not just from me, you know, but all of us can, can uh, partake of this teaching. And let's get, since, um, since uh, Henry, you're seeing the blue, Kenneth, you just saw the blue light, hallelujah, and God had me call it out for an anointing around you, man of God, apostle of God. So let's ask God for more information on this blue. I've heard about the blue eyes, the blue, the eyes that some of the people have getting these eyes, the blue eyes. Ooh, wow. <laughs> so we want more understanding and teaching on that, Father. So we're asking you for that as a lesson in our, in our training, hallelujah, in this uh, seer. Um, anointing and seer mantle <laughs> the prophetic and so ken says it's the prophetic so we know um it's healing and it's the prophetic hallelujah uh okay and so casey says yes that's what he showed me when i was receiving healing casey stevens yeah blue the blue light i'm still looking for the blue eye the blue eye anointing hallelujah that when i'm ministering that my eyes will be blue praise god and not from contacts either <laughs> from God's glory. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. <laughs> glory to God. God is so good. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I, and I, I think uh, that apostle uh, Lady Charmaine is coming on after me at seven. And we got about 10 more minutes, Lord. So you know the timing, Father. And he's still pouring forth this anointing. He's still pouring forth this glory. Hallelujah. And I think we got we had the last wave, y'all. Okay, I'm going to try to move now in the spirit realm. I'm going to try to transition. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> now it's an anointing of, glory, of joy. I'm laughing. 
Oh, hallelujah. That's right. Migraines are illegal in God's kingdom, Tammy. We rebuke them in the name of Jesus and the demonic forces that are bringing them spirits of infirmity. Leave her. Oh, hallelujah. We send the whirlwind of the anointing of God, of the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. To every migraine headache uh, that's associated with this stream today. Ooh, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, do your work. We pray, Father. We believe. But it's your job to do the work. And so we're going to leave that in your hands. Okay, when you, in case he's saying, when you see that blue, get into a place that took me under a glory cloud. Got into, oh, wow, okay, praise God. The Shekinah glory cloud, hallelujah. The blue light and the blue has a lot to do with that as well. Praise God. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Oh, how can, yes, Shelly, I can, I can, I can feel the peace. That's what Shelly is saying. Can you feel that peace? And remember, you know, with the uh, increase of these anointings and graces that God has given is coming in a blanket of peace. God is our peace. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So what is Cindy saying all about her? The light leaves when we allow the spirit of fear. The, this is why we pray for peace that places, that uh, paces all understanding that, right? It, the peace of Jesus that, um, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Praise God that surpasses our understanding. It just washed over me, Shelley said. Yes, it does. Amazing. <laughs> oh, praise God. Hallelujah. And so for all of you that are watching me, we have the live star. We have live stream, live me, and Periscope. Praise God. I am interacting with my Facebook family on the Prophets Teaching Group. And uh, they're sending in prayer requests and um, giving comments of the glory of God and how God is manifesting in them. Praise God. And we're praying for them. So if any of you have any prayer requests on any of the other uh, streams, just let us know and we'll pray for you. But we, I think uh, the anointing right now to, is okay now. I think it's, it's time for us to go. <laughs> Praise God until tomorrow. Hallelujah. The Lord said the word will go forth with signs and wonders following. So I'm expecting you guys to have some dreams today, to have some visions, open visions, hallelujah, trances. <laughs> so uh, internal and external. And I want to hear from you guys this week on what God has shown you, because there's going to be a time at which we are going to go over those, those things that God is showing you and you get some clarity, some understanding, some interpretation and some strategy you know, from the Lord regarding those things. Okay. All right. So God bless you. The man of God has prayed for you. And I'm going to say peace, peace of Jesus be with you today. Just stay in that peace, stay in that realm. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we'll see you in the morning with more on the seer. Okay. The seer anointing and grace. Praise God. Hallelujah. We love you guys. Bye. <laughs>